Okay, we're back with the actual subject of the video, not me going to buy something and then detouring and completely forgetting what I'm there for. But well, here we are. This time I'm not lazy. I am tracing the thing onto the watercolor paper. This time since she's kind of small and doesn't have many details as a portrait, I kind of went on to actually trace it and I love it. I love watching and filming a light pad. It's just so satisfying for some reason. I'll have to admit that I don't do it most of the times because, well, it takes a little bit of time, especially if I have lots of things on the sketch. But also because the more you try to trace it, the more you try to redo a sketch, the more you lose the little intricacies of the sketch itself and there is something that seems to be lost every time. Just like, you know, when you finish a drawing and then you're like, eh, but I kind of like the sketch better and I kind of like some things that were lost on the way on the process. Well, that's the reason that sometimes I just print what I already sketched because I know I won't lose anything. Like there is one less step for me to lose stuff on the way. Okay, let me tell you about these watercolors that I just bought. I have no idea why I started uh, thinking about them. I think it's because they're really, really cute and I just have a weak spot in my heart for art supplies and then Sometimes, all of a sudden, they will talk to me and, and I have to listen. Okay, but, well, seriously, no. <laughs> um, I think it's because I was kind of... You know what? I'm not even going to try to excuse myself or to make up an explanation. I really just wanted to try it and that's it. We're going to accept that as whatever reason I'm giving you. So, but, uh, but to be very, very honest, I am in love with it because I didn't know that I had a problem with normal watercolor pens and, and uh, tube ones. I don't think I do, but I, as you can see, I'm giving myself excuses and you'll have to accept it because you're not here to stop me. So basically, I was kind of getting annoyed at, at, at my laziness for not wanting to, to, to prepare everything and to be scrubbing the watercolor pens all the time. And when I... When I tried these, I was like, wow, it's one less step. It's one less, <laughs> one less problem. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I just said that. But yeah, it's one less thing to do. So we waste less time scrubbing, 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 especially when it's something kind of big and you have to, to make up a lot of paint. And usually you would get from the tubes because well it's more concentrated but I would never get the tubes because I don't really have watercolor tubes so I'll be just scrubbing it forever and until I get the desired pigmentation and the concentration that I want it takes a bit of time and if you multiply that by the amount of colors that you actually use in a paint in a painting um it, yeah it, it's not supposed to be annoying or anything but for some reason um, my brain just doesn't like it. Of course, our brains always want to take shortcuts and if there is something to stop it, it will want to stop. So <laughs> I'm happy to have the two. So when I'm feeling a little bit more like, like I don't want to be stopped and having to fight my brain to keep going, I'll take the liquid ones and I'm super happy with these two. I'm trying two brands here, the Dr. P.H. Martins. I already make the stupid infamous joke on my Instagram that I always think of Dr. Martins boots. I wasn't gonna say it again, but here I am. Um, I'm not even gonna apologize because I hope you're still there listening to me and my weird thoughts. But well, um, I'm also trying Ecoline. When I went to is it Ecoline or Acoline? I don't know. But it, um, when I was trying to choose my colors, I got somebody tell me that the Ecoline ones are not light fast. So I was trying to pick up some more of the PH Martins, 
but they are a little bit more expensive. I think it's a dollar, a dollar fifty, almost two dollars more expensive. So we, oh, I didn't want to, but well, um, when you go buy expensive art supplies, you don't really want to pay the price and also have it be not that top quality. So I ended up kind of going for the PH Martins because, well, if you're gonna spend that money, better spend it well, right? <laughs> so I can't tell you right now the differences and I can't tell you which one I prefer or if it's worth it anyways, but I'll still do some other tests and then I'll come back and report it back to you. <laughs> Okay, now to a fun part, I don't know if it's fun, not so fun, but I have something to tell you. So I was using this paper, which is Fabriano Artistico. It's one of the best watercolor papers, like 100% cotton watercolor papers, that is not as expensive as Arches. So it's a good, good alternative. But as we all do, I was looking for, I'm always looking for cheaper options because you know, <laughs> money, and uh, I like to test watercolor papers just because you never know. And the way I started painting with watercolors was honestly in the cheapest thing I could I could ever find, just because I didn't I didn't really know much. So whatever I did was gonna be practice, and it would count for something. So I didn't really care much about choosing the best uh, supplies and the best things I could find. I just tried to do whatever I could with whatever I had. Wow, sounds so beautiful. But yeah, that's what I did. So for most part of my watercolor journey, which is not that long, but well, it, it's something, right? <laughs> so I was using very cheap paper, like um, I think worse than actual, like the, the famous Canson XL, it was like plain sketchbook paper. Yes, I did that. I remember my very first paintings were sketchbook paper, which doesn't take uh, water at all. I don't know how I did that, to be honest. But I did do some paintings on sketchbook paper and those kids' watercolor paints, like those that come in a plastic container. And it's very, very kid-like. It, it looks like you would find it in a classroom full of kids, but well, that's the only thing that I had and uh, yeah, I, I think I was trying to make it work anyways. What I mean is I wasn't really consciously thinking about the paper. I was just like trying whatever I could find. So I kept buying like the cheap ones like Canson XL Mixed Media, Canson XL Watercolor, the Fabriano Studio, and then one day, I don't know, I don't even know why, but I, I bought this one. It's a very small pad, it's like 5x7, so I can't really do bigger paintings. And uh, for some reason, I bought that, and it's priced as a bigger pad, like 11x14 uh, or 8x10 on the other brands. But it's smaller, so the price was still okay, only I was getting less paper. But it tricked my brain enough that I actually bought it. The few paintings that I that I did with it were heaven. But still, I still had that mindset of like, yeah, we're just trying to do whatever we can with what we have. So I didn't really pay attention that that was the paper doing its thing and being exceptional and wonderful and all. So I just kept painting and kept being amazed I guess and happy and I would forget about it so I would go back to my cheaper papers and um, what happened is I thought it meant that my skills were crazy that my skills were all over the place and that I had so many ups and downs with watercolors so I completely took it personally I thought the paper was just paper and what matters the most is the skills which is something that we see everywhere and there is some truth to, to an extent. 
but let's never repeat my mistake and paper is important and we all know that but well little me doing my thing <laughs> but i come here with this message to say that even though we know things we have the information and we think we know it better we think we would pay attention and actually think about the things that we're told everywhere because any video you watch on watercolor and any blog you read anything at all information wise about watercolors they're gonna talk about paper and how paper is important and to choose well your paper and to try different things and while i did do all of that i wasn't really paying that much attention which is hell of confusing but well it happened let's just laugh together i guess <laughs> I wanted to specifically add that I was making a commission last week or the past weeks. I was using the Fabriano Studio paper because I really like hot pressed paper. And that was a good option that I could find with a brand that I actually like. So I thought that it would be a nice experience. And I even have a video here on the channel where I tried it for the first time with gouache and I tell myself out loud and I tell you that I don't like it but still I still think that it's me and the fact that I'm trying gouache for the very first few times as well so I blame myself and I blame the gouache but not the paper <laughs> just congratulate yourself Ivna very good so continuing my weird thought process that goes up and down I'm sorry but I was doing the commission and then I was like having such a hard time it was so difficult to work with that paper. It wouldn't hold the washes, it wouldn't take any layers, it wouldn't deepen the colors enough. So I would mix something and then when I apply it to the paper, it's completely different. And then I keep trying to add layer to get more saturation, but it just doesn't work. It's just hard. So what I did is I finally caved in and I bought 100% watercolor. What? Yeah, it is 100% watercolor paper, all of them are. But I finally came in and bought 100% cotton watercolor paper. I'm not coming back from that. I don't think so because it just confuses you. It's just like too many things that are, are going on at the same time. There is your skill level, there is your practice with watercolors per se, there, there are the effects that you're trying to achieve there is the artwork itself that you're trying to create and have come to life you don't know how you want to get there but you're trying already that's the process of painting already so to put the paper not doing the thing it's supposed to do on top of all that it's just too much there are too many things to go wrong so if we can at least make it less hard on ourselves to paint and have a good time and just focus on practicing and getting better at the skills themselves, which is one of the hardest parts. Um, that could be very helpful. So if I could tell you anything that I've learned is that I won't be fighting my paper anymore. I cave in, if I have to pay a little extra, I will because it's completely worth it and it changes the whole thing. It's like I'm paying for my mental health to be preserved and to actually enjoy the process a lot more, like it's supposed to be. And let me tell you again that when you match good quality watercolor paint, like the PH Martin ones, and good quality paper, which is the Fabriano Artistico series, oh lord, it's such a joy to paint. And it's just like, it's, <laughs> I can't explain, it's like you're... It's so smooth, it's like butter on paper. Not really, because the texture is liquid. But well, it's so pleasing and you even forget what's going wrong. You just keep going and it's just so much fun. Even with a tiny painting like this, that there is not much going on. But it's just, it's just so peaceful to see the watercolor doing its thing and going where it's supposed to go, like playing on the paper, but in a nice way. I kind of want to inspire you to go buy some decent paper and some decent watercolors and have fun. But I also know because, well, from my own experience, that it costs a lot of money. And we might not all have 
the budget right now to go on spend on so many things. So basically, I want you to be inspired and motivated to go do it, but I don't at the same time. Yes, I'm very confused. I found that the solution to all of this is gonna be I change the subject, I pretend like I never told you anything, like this didn't really happen, and we all smile and proceed to whatever we go now. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, here is a new way that I'm doing the outline for my stickers. I'll select the background, then invert my selection. Up there on the menu, go to select, modify, expand then output about 20 or 25 pixels 30 depends on what how big the sticker is i added a little keyboard shortcut for that then i'll click select and mask and up the contrast and the smooth up to 100 percent you can see some weird dots in my selection that's because when i scanned it i was cleaning up the scan and i did that on another layer with the clone stamp and everything so i I can always go back and erase whatever I did wrong, but I forgot to flatten the image, so it picked up all the tiny areas that I was cleaning. Sometimes I'll see that the corners are still a lot sharp, so I'll redo the masking by holding Ctrl and clicking on the little thumbnail on the layer, then go into Select and Mask and upping the contrast and the smooth again, the same way we did before. I want to talk about the process, but I feel like I've already said everything that I do on the other videos. So I feel like I'm repeating myself all the time. Maybe I should do like a question box on Instagram or here on YouTube and ask you guys if you want me to talk about something specific. Because I'm not really sure what to say anymore. <laughs> this one was a little more fun and intricate than the other paintings just because it was something traditional that I had to scan in and treat it a little bit more so i decided to put this process of cleaning up the the painting and adding little bits of things and uh, making sure that the white is 100 percent white and still showing the texture i added a few more details digitally because i wanted to fill up some blank spaces and to match the texture of the actual leaf and the other parts that came with the texture of the watercolor paper I'm using lots of distress brushes and texture brushes to bring back all that and look like they belong together. I thought I was done. I thought I was good with my stickers and that was gonna be it. But as I was cutting them and I had it on my hands and I was like, I really miss my darks. I really miss the contrast. I really miss... There is something here that's not showing up and I'm kind of wanting to try glossy paper now for those exact things that I'm missing. I love this Cricut vinyl and by the way, I changed my mats and it's just game changer, life changing. All the problems that I had with the vinyl curling on itself are now gone. I feel silly because, well, I could have done this earlier. I tried cleaning up my mat. You're gonna see later on that I'm watching lots of videos <laughs> on how to clean my Cricut mat. But this one was one year old, even more, like one year and four months. So I just decided to buy another one and it changed a lot.
love how sometimes I just cut off the subject completely and then I come back like nothing ever happened and just continue talking. But well, that's the internet, right? Okay, so um, I woke up the other day and I was like, mm, I want to try something different. I'm not happy with those stickers. So here I'm trying some glossy paper, the Cricut vinyl and the online labels matte sticker paper, which is everybody's favorite. And I'll compare it to you and I'll show you the results so you don't think I'm crazy, overreacting or overthinking. <laughs> I'm really happy I changed it and you see in a bit what I mean. Oh, oh, I added some veins. Can I call them veins? <laughs> on the leaves as well and changed a little bit of the colors but overall it's kind of the same thing and I redid all of them on different paper it's exactly the same illustration just different papers and here are the results to show you the difference the paper can make I tried my best to make sure that the picture is exactly like um, the actual stickers it's a bit harder to see on the screen but you can tell that the one on the bottom left is the worst this is the online labels matte sticker paper. It lacks contrast, it lacks saturation, and it just looks cheaper, in my opinion. Well, you can't see it here a lot, but in real life it looks very dull. It looks like it looks like the printer decided not to put in its best work. It was just like, meh, I don't feel like working today. I don't I don't feel like doing much, so here's what you get. And the Cricut vinyl is actually very good. It's overall like a medium paper, I would say, but it still lacks deep colors and deep tones because it's still matte paper. So the paper is not meant to print dark stuff. So this one on the right, it's a generic glossy paper that I found on Amazon. I'm gonna try to find the brand for you and put it somewhere on the description box maybe. But for now, it's my favorite one, even though it it's not perfect it's still too dark and too blue like everything shifts to a blue hue somehow um, maybe the coating of the paper gives that a weird look but for now it's the one that I like the best because it just like it has everything I want like it has nice deep colors it has nice saturation and it looks a little bit better than all the other two and the others that I had tried before. So that's what I'm gonna keep on doing and I hope you like it too. that'll be all for today's video I hope you liked it I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the process of making a sticker from scratch from a traditional painting this time I don't do that very often but it's so much fun I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on my next video then bye bye Ah, you, 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 you play? Sweet? No? Okay, maybe you. Alright, now you look nice. No? Mm.